Plants perform photosynthesis to store energy in chemicals that they can break down and use later. Photosynthesis directly synthesizes two important chemicals, NADPH and ATP, which are used in processes throughout organisms. Photons from the sun or another light source interact with specific molecular complexes found in plant cells. Photosynthesis takes place in an organelle or a specialized subunit of the cell called chloroplast. Other pigments can be found in plants, but the pigment chlorophyll in chloroplast actually gives plants their green color. Chlorophyll and other pigments play an important role in photosynthesis. Although only one chloroplast is pictured here, Hundreds can be in an individual plant cell. Chloroplasts have membrane-bound compartments in them known as thylakoids. In the membranes of the thylakoid, we can find the structures that start the processes of photosynthesis. The pigments in plants are used to absorb photons. These are a part of pigment protein complexes, also called light harvesting complexes. Light harvesting complexes are abundant in the thylakoid membrane. They are able to deliver excitation energy from photons to other light harvesting complexes. These chain together and eventually deliver energy to specialized pigment protein complexes with reaction centers. Photosystem 2 contains light harvesting complexes and a reaction center. When other light harvesting complexes transfer energy to Photosystem 2, it is able to perform chemical reactions that prepare a molecule to carry electrons for the next step of photosynthesis. The electron carrier that Photosystem 2 works on is plastoquinone. Photosystem 2 is connected to a water oxidizing complex. The water oxidizing complex splits water molecules into oxygen, protons, and electrons. The oxygen atom binds to another oxygen atom from a previous water splitting. These eventually exit the thylakoid. Two protons are taken from outside of the thylakoid to use in Photosystem 2's electron transfer. Using the light energy it received from the light harvesting complexes, Photosystem 2 adds two electrons and two protons to plastoquinol, which it turns into plastoquinol. Plastoquinol is then released from Photosystem 2 and allowed to move freely in the thylakoid membrane. The electrons that resulted from water splitting are then used to replenish the electrons from the reaction center. The protons are sent into the liquid of the thylakoid. Cytochrome B6F takes the electrons and protons from plastoquinol, converting it back to plastoquinone. The protons from this are released into the thylakoid, and plastoquinone is released into the membrane. Cytochrome B6F adds the two electrons onto another electron carrier called plastocyanin. This electron carrier operates in the liquid inside of the thylakoid. When the electrons are added to plastocyanin, two more protons pass into the liquid inside of the thylakoid. Plastocyanin is used to transfer electrons to photosystem 1. Photosystem 1 has a similar composition to photosystem 2 since a reaction center is surrounded by light harvesting complexes in Photosystem 1 as well. Photosystem 1 is also excited using light energy from light harvesting complexes. The Photosystem 1 reaction center uses the electrons from plastocyanin to mediate another light-driven electron transfer. Photosystem 1 takes the electrons from plastocyanin, and plastocyanin is allowed to go back into the liquid inside the thylakoid. Photosystem 1 adds electrons from plastocyanin to ferrodoxin in its reaction center. Then, ferrodoxin provides electrons to the ferrodoxin NADP plus reductase. This reductase adds two electrons and a proton from the inside of the thylakoid to NADP to synthesize NADPH. This is a molecule that is used in important reactions in the cell, such as the synthesis of glucose. During many of the previous steps, protons have been released into the inside of the thylakoid. The resulting concentration gradient allows for the formation of ATP. Like charges repel, but the protons need a way to cross the membrane to diffuse away from one another. ATPase allows protons to pass over the membrane and uses the energy from their movement to turn adenine diphosphate, or ADP, into adenine triphosphate, or ATP. 
ATPase loads proteins into one of its subdomains. This subdomain actually rotates and holds many more protons than pictured. When this subdomain is fully loaded and another proton is added, the complex will expel a previously loaded proton onto the other side of the membrane. When three protons are transferred to the outside of the thylakoid, a phosphate group can be added to ADP to make ATP. ATP drives numerous cellular activities and acts as a molecular currency within cells. NADPH and ATP can now be used for many different processes throughout the cell. These processes allow all plants to live. The steps involved in solar energy are related to those in photosynthesis. Like plants, solar cells also get their energy from the sun and use electron transfers to make fuel or energy. However, plants have a quantum yield of almost 100%, which means that almost all of the photons that are absorbed by pigments are transferred to the reaction centers. By mimicking this efficiency in solar cells with our understanding of photosynthesis, we can push forward ecotechnology.